It was pure chance that Connor witnessed the incident that changed his life. He wasn't spying, stalking or prowling around in the shadows, but walking with a group of guys from one bar to the next. The night smelled like a Friday night. Fried food competed in the warm evening air with spicy Indian cuisine, spilled beer and drying piss. Connor was overwhelmed by the need to lighten the load, to rid himself of at least one pint of alcohol-rich urine. He wasn't the only one. Dark patches lined the streets where trails ran from dim alcoves into the gutter. It was illegal to do that on the streets, illegal and nasty, and Connor wouldn't have approved of it in daylight. But he'd had too much to drink already, and this was just what blokes did, especially in that run-down part of town. An area of cheap bars, take-out food, and overflowing litter bins. No excuse, Connor would have been ashamed of himself if it weren't for the alcohol destroying his brain cells. Correction, if Connor were sober, he wouldn't expect to pee in the street. The boys went on ahead and Connor fell behind without making a comment. They wouldn't notice his absence for a minute. He stepped toward an alleyway. It was quite wide and well lit, not some dark little passage, but not the main pavement either. Connor's dick wasn't in hand and he hadn't got into position yet when he noticed two blokes move toward each other in such a way as women and men come together. There was an intimate moment going on. And it was 2016, so it wasn't like it was a shock. They weren't in the Middle East. No one was going to be beheaded or thrown from a tall building. It was not immoral and there was no law against it. Those dudes could get married if they wanted to. Connor wasn't offended by public displays of gayness, but even so, it was still fairly unusual to see gay guys gazing into each other's eyes like that. Connor didn't want to watch them, especially not with his dick out. It didn't seem right. He wasn't that desperate and could hold it until arriving at the next bar where he'd use the toilets like a civilised person. By doing the decent thing, he'd also respect the couple's privacy in their special moment. And that was when he realised he recognised one of the guys. Of course he recognised him. Connor had worked alongside him earlier that very day. They'd known each other since they were four years old. They were once in the same class at school. Two and a half decades of friendship never prepared Connor. And it was like watching car crash TV. He couldn't turn away. Unable to help himself, he stood transfixed, gawping at the spectacle, an unfamiliar sight to Connor. The men's lips pressed together tenderly with open mouths. Connor could see clearly enough from where he stood. My best mate, Lee, has his hand on another man's rear. Oh my God, what the fuck else would Lee do with this guy? My best friend. Was he hard already? That detail, Lee's crotch, was not visible from where Connor stood, but he definitely saw a man-to-man, mouth-to-mouth gay kiss. All too soon it was over. Our Secret Wedding and Our Secret Christmas SHS Volume 1 Written by H.J. Perry Narrated by Todd Scott